Oh yes, thank you for enrolling for Kisa Project Laundry Rebus Soap Production Training. So as you have been taking it through the theoretical part with Madame Josephine, I'm here to clarify more on what we have just taken. Remember, you have been uh, defining soap as a salt of fatty acids, achieved through a chemical process called saponification. So whatever we are going to do today is called saponification. In general terms, saponification refers to the grouping of a stronger kind of solution with fatty acids to form a salt. Hence, soap itself is referred to as a salt of fatty acids achieved through a chemical process called saponification. So for us to manufacture soap, or in the definition of soap itself, we have two key terms. Or in the definition of the process that man manufactures soap, which is saponification, we have two key words. I have said that saponification is a grouping of a strong alkaline solution. So a strong alkaline solution is one key word, a strong alkaline solution. Master all those three words. Strong, which means, which means it should be strong. Alkaline, it should be alkaline. Solution, and it should, it should be in an aqueous state. So I group that with fat acids. Now what are fat acids? Scientifically, fat acids are carboxylic acids of long aromatic chains. They are eight in numbers. And when they combine, they give us the five qualities of a good bar of soap, which are hardiness, cleansing, conditioning, bubbly lather, and creamy lather. These eight fat, as fat acids are subdivided in two, two partitions. We have four of them being saturated and four of them being unsaturated. For instance, the four unsaturated fat acids are lauric, milizitic, palmitic, and stalic fat acids. This one gives us the hardiness, cleansing, and bubbly qualities in the soap we are going to manufacture. However, the saturated fat acids, which are oleic, linolenic, linoleic, and resinoleic, they will give us the conditioning and creamy lather properties in the soap we are going to manufacture. All those five qualities of a good bar of soap, we need them. However, the eight fat acids that we must use in soap production, we get them from fats or oils that have a known saponification value. Examples of such oils or fats, for instance, we have palm kernel oil, we have coconut oil, we have palm sterling, we have palm oil, we have shea butter, and others. You have a copy of the e-books. If you don't have, you need to buy one. It's at 50,000. It has a list of over more than 100 oils that you can use in soap, product, soap production and their saponification value. So, having known or having chose the type of oil or the oil you are going to use in soap production, you have to identify the fatty acid content in it. All those oils that have saponification values will be having all those eight fatty acids, but in different percentages. For instance, if I happen to make to manufacture soap with 100% formula coconut oil, still I'll manufacture soap because coconut oil has all those eight fatty acids. However, the percentage of those fatty acids, it will be high in fatty acids that are unsaturated. Remember, the fatty acids that are unsaturated will give us the hardiness, cleansing, and the bubbly lather. So it means if I use it to manufacture soap, I'll manufacture a very hard bar of soap, too hard, even harder, kind of like a stone. It will be forming too much. I call it of change. I'm going to do this training in both Uganda and English Ascension because we have two classes of people. Some of our students need the training in Uganda and some of our students need the training in English. However, I'll keep on mixing some English, some Uganda. So if I use oils that are high in unsaturated fat acids, for instance, coconut oil to manufacture soap, and I use 100% formulas with oils high in unsaturated fat acid. I've, give, I've, I've been giving an example of using a formula of one base oil, and that base oil is coconut oil, which means I'm using 100% coconut oil as my base oil in manufacturing soap. The soap I'll manufacture it will be too hard. However, it will be highly foaming because the unsaturated fat acids give us the foaming qualities and it will be highly cleansing. Cleansing meant for laundry purposes should, should, purpose should also be regulated. If the cleansing is too high, it may appear to be harsh on the skin or bodies of we, the users. It may even damage the fabrics onto which we are using 
our soap. For instance, if I can give you an example of the soaps we have here in the Ugandan market. We have liquid soaps, we have powdered soaps, and we have the laundry bar soap like the one we are training today. If you happen to use basing soap in your bathroom, it will work on your skin so well. Because basing, so basing soaps are high in conditioning properties, which means we are man if we are manufacturing basing soaps, which are intended to use more oils that are high in unsaturated fatty acids, because conditioning properties help us to maintain, help our soaps or gives our soap ability to maintain the moisture on the skin. So once you use a product that will happen to lose your moisture on the skin, that product will leave you with a dry skin. Once that product leaves you with a dry skin, it means that product is retaining water from your skin. So it leaves you with a dead skin. So your skin will end up itching or feeling kind of sort of fire onto it when you're using soap. That's why when you happen to use powdered soap in bathing, you can't bathe in peace. You feel like, like bathing so sorry, powdered soap is burning, is burning your skin. We design powdered soap basically to soften hard water so that you can use the hard water with the ease of round river soap to do the cleansing. That's why even the company that manufacture powdered soap on their stickers or on their packaging, they indicate some pictures that the user should put on gloves, meaning such a product has higher cleansing abilities that may end up not being safe to the skin or bodies of the user. Even in the course of using it in laundry purposes, you don't put powdered soap direct to a cloth. You put it in water, it softens water, or it produces a lot of foam, then you assist it with laundry bath soap because its rate of cleansing is so high that it may even end up damaging the fabrics that you are using it on too. However, the soap we are, we are learning today is called laundry bath soap. Otherwise, you can call it general purpose soap. General purpose, it means some people can use it for laundry, other people can use it for bathing, and other people can use it for maybe other domestic works like the washing utensils, washing cars, and other sort of activities. So the soap we should manufacture, it should be effective in all those areas of application. So we should give it properties that will make it effective in all those areas of application by obtaining all the five qualities in the right proportion, like hardiness, cleansing, conditioning, bubbly leather, and creamy leather. The word hardiness alone doesn't, doesn't explain it all. Because when I say hard, it means even if it is harder, like maybe a stone or a brick, it will be hard. So I want, to, I, I want to define how hard the soap should be. A good bar of soap should be strong, mild, and durable. First of all, it should be strong. When you, after manufacturing it, when you get it and try to compress it, you should feel that the soap is too, too strong. Too strong. However, not too strong like a piece of wood or like a metal object. It should have some kind of mildness into it. For instance, if I get it and I bang it on the ground, it should not sound like a stone. However much stronger it is, when I bang it on the ground, it will show, it will show signs of elasticity in it, not too hard, like maybe a metal object, and should be mild, so it should be durable. Durability means it should not vary in size after a certain period of time before using it, maybe in the wash, in the wash solution. So when I manufacture it today, even if I leave it for five years minus using it, if at all it was weighing one kilogram, it should remain one kilogram. Once it decreases or increases in size, there is something wrong with your with your product. So it should be strong, mild, and durable. That is hardiness. Then we go to cleansing. Cleansing refers to the ability of the soap to remove oily materials or greasy substances from the areas of application. Cleansing in Uganda, we call it okurongosa. So sabunya ino kubanga ino usobozi okurongosa, oba okutukuza. However, mbade nyonyora muluzungu ngangambo okutukuza kwa kukate chimala. For instance, we have some products like bleach. Two inner products in bleach. Bleach in nature product ya kutukuza. It was a made of chaff. Bleach is a product that they use to remove tough stains. Sometimes even we use it in fabrics. However, even though you're using it on, on fabrics, you don't pour it direct onto a fabric. 
because when you pour it on direct onto the, the fabric, it will over cleanse to the extent of even removing out the things you want to remain with on your fabric. For instance, if you try to use jig, maybe to wash your clothes, maybe the cross is blue or the cross is white, and you just pour the, the bleach directly onto the cloth. So where you pour the bleach, it will even remove the color of the fabric itself, which you want to maintain. For your intention is to remove the dirty stuff and the stains on your clothes. But if you pour the bleach directly to your clothes, it will even remove the color of your cloth. It can even remove the cloth itself and leaves you with a torn shirt or with a torn cloth. So however much it, it cleans, that percentage of cleansing, it is not user friendly to the bodies or to the fabrics of the user. So they give you instructions on how best you have to use it. However, for our only bus soap, we use it with our direct hands, with our naked hands. You know, instruction, the only instruction we give you is for external use only. As long as you don't swallow it, don't press it in your ears, don't press it in your nose, don't press it in your eyes, it is okay to use it anywhere. So we should give it moderate cleansing abilities that will make it effective in all those areas of application. So you can observe your, that your soap is, has moderate cleansing abilities in the nature of the form it, it produces. That's why we have two other sub-qualities in the form of the soap. We have what we call bubbly lather and creamy lather. Bubbly lather measures the cleansing abilities of the soap and creamy lather stabilizes the nature of the soap lather. In Uganda, Okutukuza, so so our soap should be 50, 50 percent, bubbly lather 50 percent and bubbly lather and cream lather 50 percent. If you are manufacturing powder detergent, we give them more percentages of bubbly lather because we want to make them stronger in cleansing and we give them lower percentages in cream lather. However, if we are manufacturing medicated or direct soaps, we give them bigger percentages in cream lather because we want to obtain the conditioning properties and we give them less percentages in bubbly lather. So the last quality will be conditioning and conditioning with the amount of moisture left on the skin after rinsing. A good product should leave the skin oily even after, after rinsing. So those are the five qualities of a good bar of soap that you have to get in the eight fat acids we choose to use in soap, in soap production. Those eight fat acids, you can't see them with your naked eyes. However, when they combine, they create what we call a base oil with a known saponification value. The term saponification value alone defines to the number or oh, the term of the term saponification refers to the number of milligrams of caustic soda or lye or sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide required to completely saponify one gram of a specific fat. For instance, if you are manufacturing soap, we said we shall use a stronger kind of solution with fat acids. The amount of a stronger kind of solution we shall use in the fat acids we choose to use will be defined, or we shall get it from the saponification values of the fats we shall use, choose to use. For instance, the fat I'm using is pumpkin oil. I'm using 1,000 grams, I'm giving you an example. First of all, I have to tell the subluxation value of the pumpkin oil I'm using. The subluxation value of pumpkin oil is 